With the file upload part of the section finished, let's now turn our attention to sending emails. And we actually already sent email before for the password reset, but in the next couple of lectures, we're gonna take that to a whole new level. And what we're gonna do is to build email templates with Puck and sending real emails using the SendGrid service. And now in this first lecture, we're gonna build a more robust email handler than the one that we had before. So let's open up our utilities folder and then in here, remember, we already have an email file. But right now what we have here is just a very simple uh, email sending handler, which is not able to take in a lot of options. And so now we're going to build a much more robust solution here. All right. So what I'm gonna do is to create a class and that class is gonna be called email. So module, dot exports and so also this class is what we're going to be exporting uh, from this file and then as always a class needs a constructor function which is basically the function that is going to be running when a new object is created through this class now let's actually take a look at how we would use this class in practice and so the idea basically whenever we want to send a new email is to import this email class and then use it like this. So creating a new email and then into it, we want to pass a user. And so that user will then contain the email address and also the name in case we want to personalize the email and also a URL. And a good example for this one is for example, the reset URL for resetting the password. Okay, so a new email object and then on there, we want to call the method that is actually going to send the email. So let's say send welcome. And so that one uh, is going to be uh, sent whenever a new user signs up for our application. All right. We will then also have send uh, password reset. And the way we will set all this up will make it really easy to then keep adding new and new methods uh, similar to this one to send different emails for different scenarios. All right. Anyway, uh, since we passed the user and the URL into a new email, well, our constructor then needs to take these in as arguments. So user and URL. And so what happens in this constructor is that this dot two will be equal to the user dot email. Then we also want to define the first name of the user again in order to basically personalize the email. And so that's user.name and let's split it and take only the first uh, element in the resulting array. So we did this one before and then also this dot URL is equal to the incoming URL. Finally, let's also set this dot from right here. So basically at the object level. And so each object created from this class will then get this property. And so this one will be similar to what we have here. So it's basically this from, so let's just copy it, but it's nice to have it in a one central place like this. Now, one thing that I really want to do is to basically define this email address here as a configuration variable. And so an environment variable that we can very easily change by manipulating the uh, config.env file. All right, so let's call this one email from, and then we only want the email address itself. All right, so another case where it's very helpful to use environment variables. And now let's make this a template string. And of course, plug that in here. So that's process.env email from. Next up, let's create a method here in order to create the transport. So similar to what we have here. So create transport. And now here we actually want to have different transports, whether we are in production or not. So when we're in production, we actually want to send real emails and we will do that a bit later using SendGrid. But if we are not in production, 
Then we still want to use our mail trap application, just like we did it before when we sent emails. So instead of the email going to a real email address, it will get caught into our mail trap inbox so that we can actually take a look at it in our development process. So that transporter will be exactly the same as this one. So let's just copy it. But first, let's say if process.env dot node env so remember that's how we check whether we are in production or not and so if that is in production and so if we're in production then we want to create a transporter for sandgrid so let's just put that here and again we will do that later for now let's just return something from here doesn't matter let's say one all right and then Basically, otherwise, we want to return this node mailer dot create transport. Okay, so this transport here will basically return a new node mailer transport like this. Or on the other hand, when we're in production, then the one that's going to be here. Okay, so let's actually delete it from here. Also, we want to delete this one. And now let's create the send method. And so this is going to be the method that will do the actual sending. Okay. And this one will receive a template and a subject. And you will understand a bit better why that is once this entire class is complete. Okay. So template and subject. So let's put a comment here of what this will do. And now before we actually write out this function, let me show you how we're going to use it. And so why we need the template and the subject here. So remember how we said up here that we're going to have one uh, method called send welcome and also like a method for sending a reset uh, password email. And so let's now actually add that here. So send welcome. And this one doesn't uh, receive any arguments and all it really does is to call send with the template and the subject that we want for this email. Okay. And so again, this makes it really easy to then create different emails for all kinds of different situations. Okay. So we have this one broad uh, send function here and then all of these more specific ones, which will then in turn call the broader uh, send function, which is doing the actual work. Okay. And actually here it is this dot send because of course these methods here, they are going to be defined on the current object. And so that's this. Then here we pass in the template name. And so this template name that I put here will in the future be a pug template that we're going to create. So actually in the next lecture, we're going to be creating this pug template in order to send this welcome email. Okay, and then just the subject line. Let's say welcome to the Nader's family. And so, uh, just like this, we do not need to worry about any of the implementation details when we're actually sending the email. So for example, in the point of our code where we want to send the welcome email, we do not have to worry about template names or about the subject lines. All we're going to do is to say send welcome email and that's it. And then our class will take care of uh, dealing with the implementation. All right. Anyway, let's now actually then build this send function. And so what we're going to do in this uh, function is to first render the HTML for the email based on a pug template. So basically the one that we're passing into uh, here with template. Then define the email options. And so that's once more uh, going to be very similar to this one. And in fact, let me go ahead and cut it from here and paste it here. Okay. And of course, it's not going to be exactly the same, but we will leave that for a bit later. All right. And then finally, 
create a transport and send email. Okay, and so let's uh, leave that one for later as well. So, starting with point number one, uh, usually up until this point, we only ever used Pug to create a template and then we pass the name of the template into the render function on the response, right? So we always just used it like this, rest.render, and then here the name of the template, right? And what this render function does behind the scenes is to basically create the HTML based on the Pug template and then send it to the client. Now in this case, we do not really want to render. All we want to do is to basically create the HTML out of the template so that we can then send that HTML as the email. So basically defining it here as an HTML option into these mail options, okay? So remember how we can specify text and HTML. And mainly we are interested in sending an HTML email. And so that's why we're gonna have a Pug template from which we will generate this HTML, okay? So it's not gonna be working like this, but instead we actually need to require the Pug package here. So Pug like this, and then we need to use Pug dot render file, okay? And so this will take in a file and then render the Pug code into real HTML, okay? And so that we can then save into a variable HTML, all right? So where is that file? Well, it is at dir name, so dir name, which remember is the location of the currently running script. And so that is right now this utilities folder, okay? And so from there, we need to move one step up, then go into views, and from there go into an emails folder that we're gonna also create in a second. And then in there is where we're gonna have the template file. So, template.pug. So for the welcome email, this uh, template is gonna be called welcome. And so let's now actually create that here in the views, create a new folder, email, and then in there, new file, welcome.pug, okay? And we're not going to really be creating this template in this video, but I just wanted to show you how all of this is gonna work, okay? So this welcome will be passed here into template, and then it will grab that file from the views folder, great? So that is the first step. Next up, let's define the email options. So from is now this dot from, remember. So right here. Next up, we have this dot to, and we also have the subject, which is equal to the subject that's coming in right here. And so, yeah. Actually, we don't even need to define this one. And we have or HTML. So like this, or of course, that is not even necessary because it's the same name. Now, next up, we also want to include a text version of our email uh, into the email, okay? And that's actually really important because it's better for email delivery rates and also for spam filters, all right? And also, uh, some people just prefer plain, simple text emails instead of having the more formatted HTML emails, all right? And so basically, we need a way of converting all the HTML uh, to simple text. So stripping out all of the HTML, leaving only the content. And for doing that, we are going to install yet another package. And so this one is called HTML to text. All right, let's include that here to text require HTML to text like this. Okay, 
Now let's use that to convert or HTML. So we use HTML to text dot from string and then that string is stored in HTML, right? So these are our mail options and actually I forgot something very, very important here in this first step, so in this render file, because just like with response.render, we can also pass data into render file. And of course, that is very important if we want to actually do our email personalization with the name and also pass in the URL. And so let's do it just like we did uh, normally in the render uh, function. So that's first name, set it to this dot first name. And the URL is this dot URL. And also let's pass in the subject and you will see a bit later why we need that. Okay. So now let's finally create a transport using or create transport function and then send the email. So fair enough. That's this dot create transport. So remember that this is just this method here, this one, and it has the exact same name as this function here coming from NodeMailer. So that's a bit confusing. So let's call it new transport here. Okay, and so here that's also new transport so that it's a bit less confusing. All right, now let's remember how we did it here before. So we had our transporter, which we created separately in this case, and then onto that we chained uh, send mail with the options. So let's just grab that here, delete all the remaining code. So basically put that here as a reference. Okay, so this transporter is now this. All right, and so then onto that, we chain send email, and then with the mail options that we defined up here. Then we need to await all of this because of course it's an asynchronous function. And so let's now mark this one here as async. Okay, and so now we also need to await the function here, all right? Because this dot send is now indeed an async function. And so here we await that so that this function only returns as soon as the email has actually been sent. And so of course, mark this one as async as well. Awesome. That's actually it for this class. So we no longer need this example. Okay. And so in the next video, we will then actually go ahead and use this new class in order to send a welcome email. So just very quickly recap what we did here. So we created a new email class from which we can create email objects that we can then use to send actual emails. And to create a new email object, we will pass in the user and also a URL that we want to be in that email. So then here we assign all that stuff to the current object and also some other settings that we want to have available, such as the first name and the sender email. So basically to abstract this information away from the send function and to have it all in one central place. Then we have here a new transport function, which makes it really easy to create different transports for different environments. And so once more, abstracting that logic away from the actual send function, which should only be concerned about sending the email. Okay, so then here is that send function, which takes in a template and a subject, and based on that, it creates the HTML from a pug template, which will then be set into the email options, which will at the end of the function, then finally be sent in this line of code, okay? But it's not going to be this send function that we will use in our code. So instead, we're going to be creating one different function for each type of email that we want to send. And the first one that I created here is the send welcome, all right? And so for send welcome, we basically then preset the template name as welcome and the subject as this string. Okay, so I hope that made sense and I see you in a second.